USS Enterprise, one of the most valiant ladies of... With the collapse of the oil embargo to force Iran into a confrontation over the Straits of Hormuz, the U.S. and Israel are looking for another way to get the long-sought war with Iran started, and more to the point, need to make it look like Iran is starting hostilities in order to make it politically and more difficult for Russia and China to support Iran. Now, recall that Israel has a past history of attacking U.S. warships and framing others to trick the U.S. into attacks on Israel's enemies, with the Israeli attack on the USS Liberty, initially blamed on Egypt, as the most well-known example. So here we have the USS Enterprise, the oldest carrier in the fleet, on her last legs, scheduled to be decommissioned next year. Her name is well known in part because of the Star Trek TV series. Decommissioning a nuclear aircraft carrier is a very expensive process. USS Enterprise is powered by eight nuclear reactors, all of which must be disposed of as nuclear waste material along with all the associated machinery. The U.S. Navy would save a great deal of money, more than the scrap worth of the steel, if USS Enterprise were to be sunk in the Persian Gulf, where the radioactive mess is someone else's problem to deal with. So why send an ancient warship at the end of a useful life into harm's way? The same reason Franklin Roosevelt moved a bunch of obsolete warships from San Diego to Pearl Harbor, while the newer carriers and warships were well away from Hawaii on December the 7th, 1941. Israel has three Dolphin submarines, given to her by Germany. They have been seen transiting the Suez Canal in the past, and could well be operating in the Gulf of Oman, even the Persian Gulf by now, lying in wait for a used up and obsolete warship, more useful as a sacrificial lamb than an actual weapon, a ship with an American sailors, to be attacked as Israel attacked the USS Liberty, then to be blamed on the designated target, Iran by a compliant media. If you agree with this analysis, please post this video everywhere you see this carrier story. If we can make them doubt a false flag will be believed, maybe they'll call it off. Uh, is, is there something that you, you publicized about that in relation to that? I'm not sure why the person is asking the question. But well, the article about the, the, article about the uh, U.S. Israeli false flag attack may be underway. Re related to the Vincennes includes references to uh, the is Israeli past events in which, for example, in 1967 they attacked a U.S. Uh, spy ship called the Liberty, and they repeatedly strafed it and torpedoed it. They were trying to sink it, which they were unable to do in order to bring blame it on the Egyptians and bring the American government into on the side of uh, Israel in the Seven Days War. But, but also I have a link there to false flag attacks where Israel was attacking its own citizens, its own people. In, in Argentina in 1992 they blew up the Israeli embassy. But then uh, uh, two years later, 1994, apparently they hadn't killed enough people to make a big enough impression politically. They, they blew up the Jewish community center in Buenos Aires and killed a lot more. And the whole idea was that they were ups they, they blamed it on Iran. And what was going on was that the Argentine government had been cooperating with Iran in the peaceful development of nuclear energy, and the Israelis didn't like it. So I'm saying, this is a, this is a pretty tough group. The Mossad is the greatest practitioner of false flag attacks in the world.